<laughs> Greetings, humans. Greetings, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Bear Here, Yo, Soy Bear, 29-year veteran of the woods. And today, I tell you what, people, I was wondering if we were even going to make it online. We've got a, um... It's not like a tropical storm or anything like that, but uh, kind of a tropical, a tropical whatever out there. So uh, if you happen to hear uh, some rain or maybe even some thunder out there, that will be that will be the reason why out there. But uh, good to good to have Mark O for Anthony here and everyone else. I do appreciate everyone here. Well, I tell you what, people, I tell you what, it is Mia Culpa season out here uh, for beer. Yes, indeed. Um, a beer sleeps all winter, so how does he have enough moolah? For summer vacation. Well, uh, you can see in the picture right there. Uh, you didn't hack Timmy McTimerson's accounts, did you? Well, uh, you know, uh, beer's not even around for me to grill him about his crimes. Uh, let's see, Grand Theft Auto, there is the evidence. By the way, I actually have, this was from a while back. Uh, they had a kind of a hullabaloo about the whole... The whole, the whole uh, uh, transition time and everything, and they they had a issue there with uh, with El Trumpo out there. He was like trying to steal a car or something like that and drive it through there. I actually found a really neat um, uh, image of that. I, I just thought that was really cool. The Grand Theft Auto Capital City. There you go, little, little Trump. I think they have his face over CJ or something like that there. That's a uh, uh, pretty funny, pretty funny indeed. Uh, Marco for Anthony reminded Bear about that, so very cool. All right, people, I tell you what, you get in, get in your digs now. Get in your digs now because we got a little bit of um, a mea culpa. Oh, for crying out loud, why is the internet doing haywire on me? All right, well, uh, if it if it goes bad on Bear, blame it. Blame it on the rain. Blame it on the rain, people. Listen, all right, let's get right into it. A little bit of uh, mea culpa. Mia Culpa out here. Let's go ahead and find out what we're talking about here. One second. Bear with beer. As we talk about, oh, our, our favorite, our favorite top, our favorite movie out there. Our favorite movie out there, which is, let me find it here. There we go. Uh, uh, we were doing this a uh, little while back. Let me get the chat in here while we're at it. There we go. Uh, talking about this a little while back, um, just did a video on it, uh, just a very nice video, uh, thank you everybody out there that uh, checked out the video, very cool, lots of views, couple subscribers, so thank you, uh, if you're joining us, very new, uh, welcome, welcome to the channel here. Uh, so we were talking about a, a sort of, uh, rumor out there, um, uh, it came from Bounding Into Comics, but they actually got it from, um, let me see here. One second, people. Uh, the called the hashtag show. Uh, basically, they were talking about uh, what rumors are out there that might um, might have to do with the Batman out there. Uh, not one of Bear's uh, favorite Batmans at all out there. So Bear was a little bit excited. I probably should have uh, tampered that down just a little bit with it being a rumor out there. But let's go ahead. Uh, let's just get through the rumor here, and then we'll kind of talk about what is going on there. Uh, my chats are on video. There you go. Very cool. A bear finally figured that out. A bear has it. Um, rumor has it by Adele. Yes, indeed. I don't know about that. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, they were talking about a Robert Patterson's Dark Knight being phased out of the DC film universe after Matt Reeves completes uh, his planned trilogy. trilogy rather. Uh, and it, it was basically supposed to be uh, they were going to do the three and, and done. So um, uh, basically they were just going to have the three movies, maybe possibly one of the uh, Penguin shows out there uh, with, uh, who was that, uh, Colin Farrell out there. So they were going to do that and then basically end it. So uh, uh, Bear's kind of thesis behind all this stuff is, you know, okay, why are we having... You know, you, you have your 1989 Batman. Uh, he was going to be coming back with the Flash. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, they were going to have uh, Ben Affleck come back as well. So they kind of had the Snyderverse stuff in there along with the 89 Batman stuff. Uh, they had the Joker out there and it's a completely different universe. And then they also they had uh, um, the Matt Reeves, B the Batman universe. So you had a whole bunch of Batmans out there that didn't really connect together. So it was kind of a... A, a sort of a, a process of elimination. Like, okay, if they're gonna go with the Flash, why would they go with the Batman when it's two completely different universes out there? So that was kind of Bear's 
sort of thesis after reading this. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about it. Let's see. Uh, some uh, things that the old guard at war media believed in will uh, consequently be slowly phased out. And at a certain point, uh, the Batman came up in this regard. So they're talking about this as a rumor. Uh, it is said that Reeves, uh, the, the filmmaker out there, is expected to finish uh, his Batman trilogy. And after that, it's expected that this iteration of Batman would be phased out. Uh, this is troubling for Reeves and Patterson because the former made it perfectly clear that he wanted to layer his universe with streaming shows, uh, exploring, uh, and they talk about Arkham and Penguin and all that sorts of stuff. Uh, so he was going to have his movies and addition uh, was going to have his streaming stuff. So if basically, essentially, like if they got rid of the Arkham show or the Penguin show out there, uh, you would be basically breaking that contract uh, with uh, Reeves out there. So he might, he might kind of split off. So that was kind of Bear's thoughts was, okay, he only took this uh, position because he was going to get the streaming shows. If the streaming shows were out of it, why would you stay with that? Ergo, there goes the Batman out there. So they were talking about that. The Batman Penguin spinoff set to film next year. The Joker, blah, 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 blah. So they have all these different all these different uh, universes of Batman out there. I, that's why Bear says, if they're going to do it, I just have like, a, you know, a multitude of Batmans out there just kind of you know, uh, a tale of two Batmans or something like that. Uh, have have a little bit of fun with it or something like that. But um, again, it's all it's all contingent on is the Flash coming out. We'll get into that in a second. Aquaman two maybe. Oh, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, anyway, so all that stuff kind of led Beer to kind of come out and say, okay, well, I uh, pretty much it looks like for Beer that actually the the whole Batman series might be might be done with here. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, the letter is taken care of through a soft reboot of some kind uh, for the Justice League. Uh, it's still said uh, to be in play for whatever reason, and that will bring back more characters from previous films, except for Mr. Miller, uh, given his status, yada, yada, yada. Uh, there are rumors and a strong belief uh, all is leading to the restoration of the Snyderverse. Now, Bear says, no, that's not the case at all. They killed the Snyderverse. That's not going to the the flash uh, if it ever comes out was probably going to be the last of these sort of Snyderverse stuff. They're going to take that. They're going to split it. You know, the Batgirl was going to take over for Michael Keaton. Um, I don't know. Ben Affleck was going to die off or something like that. Not really sure. But uh, anyways, they're going to try and do that. And he says it's all speculative now. But going back to the Batman, things are hazier for that trilogy. A release date uh, for the story for part two are undetermined, and the former possibly years away. Now, okay, where is the egg on a bear's face? Okay, so that was came out, what was that, Saturday? Uh, the 19th? 19th there, so uh, uh, moving, jumping a little bit forward here. Uh, the Batman director, Matt Reeves, sets up a multi-year first look film at Warner Brothers and re-ups with Warner Brothers Television. So, uh, basically all of the rumor out there happened to be I'm not going to say false, but it might have kind of led people into different directions. Uh, you know, kind of Bear's thought might have been that they put that stuff out there uh, to help with some of the negotiations out there. You have people, I like Bear out here talking about it, and people getting getting up in arms and all that sort of stuff, where they might have used that as, you know, saying, hey, people actually really like the Batman movie out there. Let's go ahead and keep it. Let's give the Batman director a, a, a nice little setup here. Now, the, the big thing that you need to realize here is what they're talking about, a first a first a look, so we'll, we'll uh, circle up, uh, circle back to that uh, in just a moment here. Um, oh, oh, I'm ignoring the chat. Hold on here, Mark, before anything. Let me see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm burnt out on Batman. Yes, indeed. Well, <laughs> this is not the show for you, Mark, before Anthony. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's not the show for you at all. Um, uh, uh, they had the standard Batman films on Marathon at my hotel. Batman, Batman Begins, Batman Forever, Batman Ice, and Planet Puns. Uh, still saying, uh, it, uh, very controversially, uh, that uh, Batman and Robin is still the better film out of the two. But uh, there you go. I uh, saw the Batman uh, not too long ago in Justice League and Superman and Batman. Yes, there you go. So anyways, there is all the all the stuff uh, uh, re regarding all that sort of stuff. So let me let me circle back here real quick. 
uh, please call uh, the morning. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention, uh, let's see, uh, J.B. Augustine at the um, Melding in the Comics out there. Uh, morning Consult, uh, kind of a, kind of like a political um, uh, uh, sort of bent there. Anyways, they're, they're talking about uh, some of the stuff uh, 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 entertainment-wise. I'm not sure exactly how much uh, that might... I, I, I kind of figure out there, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of go along with it. At least it kind of helps uh, uh, put a data point on Bear's thesis out here. Uh, U.S. audiences say canceling The Flash entirely uh, should be on the table following Ezra Miller's <coughs> alleged, alleged behavior. Uh, more than two in five adults say a film like The Flash, uh, with a star accused of a variety of serious crimes, should never be released. <laughs> and there he is. There he is. Pre- Pre, uh, well, he, he was always crazy, but uh, uh, pre-super crazy out there. Pre-super crazy. Uh, and by, um, oh, good lord, uh, Celia Bianca Flor. Uh, we're going to go with that. Uh, Blanca Flor. Blanca Flor. I apologize. Uh, earlier this month, the Flash star Ezra Miller was charged with felony burglary in the latest of a string of arrests and alleged misconducts. We've talked about all this stuff before. Uh, Warner Brothers is repeatedly exploring three possible scenarios. So we've talked a little bit about that before, so we're not going to go into it uh, uh, completely here. So let's go ahead and kind of figure out what their, what their findings are here. Oh, what Warner Brothers Discovery should do with the Flash. This is their question here that they had. Uh, is the actor, actress, uh, um, oh, excuse me, if the actor, actress is accused of all the above actions, uh, as Miller has been, uh, more than two in five adults, or four, that's a terrible, a bear doesn't even know math, and that's terrible. Uh, uh, why not just say less than half? Uh, more than two in five U.S. adults said the studio uh, should cancel the film and never release it. Uh, meanwhile, a third said the film should be postponed and refilmed with a different actor. Uh, only 14% thought it should be released as is. So that's what they're looking at right there. Again, are they are they reliable numbers? Bear, bear can't be for certain, but it is a kind of a data point out there that we have. I don't know, a bad movie versus uh, a movie that is arguably worse uh, to the point it's funny. Uh, yeah, I... I, I uh, 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 we're going to get into a serious discussion of uh, uh, Batman and Robin versus uh, the Batman out there. Uh, basically, um, I I'll say this. Uh, Joel Schumacher, uh, like him or dislike him, agree or disagree with it, what he was doing with that film. Uh, that was his vision. And basically, uh, I I probably he realized his vision. Now, was audiences at the time receptive of that vision? Probably not. And they wanted the darker Batman when uh, he, he went lighter. That's fine. That's, you know, no worries about that. A stupid ice puns and all that. I'm not sure if the Batman came out to be the vision that it that it really started out as with uh, Ben Affleck there. So, um, a, a number, a number of different issues there. But I would say probably one of the, one of the kind of uh, uh, sticking points there for beer. Yes, indeed. All right, uh, nearly a uh, two in five frequent moviegoers uh, or respondents who uh, see films and theaters multiple times a year also said the film should never be released with stars accused of the things listed above. And more, and more. They didn't even get into the whole uh, 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 illegal pot farm with automatic weapons and uh, holding uh, young children hostage. Uh, allegedly, allegedly out there. Uh, this is the one that kind of got beer here. Uh, among all generations, Gen Z adults were more likely to say they were aware of Miller's uh, misconducts and arrest. I would say that's probably their target audience. Uh, users of the uh, Gen Z dominated app TikTok have widely shared uh, news about the actor and on uh, YouTube. Let's not forget about beer. Uh, with related hashtags receiving billions of views. Where are all of those millions of views for beer? Uh. Uh, Mia Solange, a TikTok creator who also uses they, them pronouns, uh, and was previously in an alleged intimate relationship uh, with Miller, posted a video on the app accusing uh, him uh, of abuse. Yes, indeed. So there you go. That was kind of an interesting, um, interesting there. Um, so they also asked how the Hollywood, uh, how Hollywood rather, uh, should handle a troublesome star. Kind of a generic. Kind of a generic thing, so, um, uh, <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> Stay cool, cool, allow me to break the ice. 
Oh, so many good. So many, I tell you what, I, um, uh, Arnold, you know, uh, not the greatest actor in the world, um, probably didn't shoot a lot of the scenes that he was in, you know, just the only ones that he had with, you know, because he had to get it in all the makeup and everything, all the big suit and everything, so they probably only did that for, like, certain amounts. I think, uh, Chris O'Donnell was saying that, uh, like, he hardly ever had any scene. he was in scenes with Arnold, or supposedly, but, uh, like, hardly ever, like, talked face-to-face -face with him in, in a, any given scene or something like that, so that was kind of, kind of interesting there. Uh, let's see. Uh, meanwhile, 70% of U.S. adults said that they would uh, support a movie or studio removing an actor or an actress from advertising for the film. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miller also co-stars in uh, Dolly Land, which premieres at the Toronto International Film Festival next month. And the festival is reportedly leaving their name, his name for crying out loud, off of the press releases cast credits here. Uh, let's see. And there was one other one there. Uh, was that it? Oh, I suppose that I thought there was another one here. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, here we go. I, I skipped right past it. Uh, four in five Americans hadn't heard much or anything about Miller's arrest and controversies. And most who have heard about them, 64%, say that they still plan to see The Flash. Uh, either in theaters or street. What is wrong with you people? What the heck? I mean, you hear about this stuff and you say, oh yeah, I'm still gonna go see that movie. What? What? Why? Why? Why, people? Why? So anyways, that kind of gets into uh, Bear's thesis here about uh, why why they might be canceling the Batman. So if they were gonna keep uh, the Flash here, let's just say, for example, they keep the Flash uh, uh, movie, uh, they spent $200 million on it, uh, we gotta go ahead and do it, let's go ahead, get it over with, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they, uh, they go ahead and put it out, well, you've already got two Batmans in there. Uh, so th that would be the, the Batman that people expect to see. And then they see Robert Patterson, and it's like, yeah, dude, what the, what the heck? What the hell, man? So I, that's kind of was leading Bear to say, okay, well, they've already got a Joker, in its own little universe there. They've already got the Batman in the sort of Snyderverse Flash universe there. They might not do the whole uh, 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 third or fourth round here with uh, the Batman out there. So uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Deadline and uh, Mike Fleming Jr. Not to be confused with Mike Fleming Sr. out there. Yes, indeed. Let's see. Uh, allow me to break the ice. Uh, uh, stay cool, bird boy. <laughs> uh, Marco for Anthony. Just coming up with the puns here. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, exclusive. This is an exclusive, people. Uh, Warner Brothers is going all in on the Batman director, Matt Reeves, and his six in Idaho production company. Uh, he has been, um, or excuse me, he has become the first filmmaker given an overall first look deal. We'll get into that in just a moment here. Uh, since Warner Brothers Pictures co uh, a group co chair CEOs uh, Michael DeLuca and Pamela Ebdy uh, were hired by Warner Brothers Discovery Chief the David Z out there, the Z Man, uh, to steer the film division. In addition, Reeves has re upped with Warner Brothers Television Group and Chairman uh, Channing Dungy, 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 uh, where he is also working on the Batman spin off series, The Penguin, with Colin Farrell. Now, this is the first that Bear has heard that they are actually working on it. It was kind of a, well, we're going to think about it, uh, it should be the next thing, yada, yada, yada. I haven't heard anything about it other than it was an idea and it might be the next thing that came out. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, that last Batman was just odd. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Uh, Reeves in 6th in Idaho uh, had a first look film deal at Netflix. So he's going from Netflix over to uh, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers Discovery, it should be. Uh, Reeves is spending so much time on film and TV projects related to the Batman franchise that it made perfect sense for him to call Warner Brothers home with the multi-year first look. Uh, DeLuca and Abby hope to see him grow into the kind of cornerstone filmmaker uh, that Todd Phillips has been. Of course, he's got the Joker. I, they're not franchises for crying out loud. He only had one film. Uh, and what Clint Eastwood has been with uh, the studio forever. Uh, making this legendary studio my home is a dream, said Reeves in a statement. I am so excited to be working with Mike, Pam, and Channing, uh, Channing and our teams to bring captivating stories I am truly passionate about to the big and small screen. Uh, under the terms of the deal, Warner Brothers Picture Group Production Divisions, 
I uh, goes all into that. Uh, we'll have a first look right into Reeves' work as a writer, a director, and or a producer. Uh, Reeves is currently back at work on the sequel. This is the first that Bear has heard about this. Uh, back at work on the sequel, co uh, co-writing rather, with uh, Madston Tomlin, uh, the second installment of a DC Resurrection. Uh, uh, yeah, res oh, for crying out loud. Recruciation, oh, for crying out loud. Ah, the big words, people. Uh, that drew strong reviews and a global gross north of $770 million. Well, it cost like $500 million to make, so it didn't really make a whole lot. Uh, Robert Patterson is back for the sequel as the title character. That would be interesting if he didn't come back as the title character. Just come back as a totally separate... Uh, that's one of the things that Bear said. He would have been a good, um, a good villain. He's not a good... Uh, and, and again, it's not... Um, nothing against Robert Patterson or anything like that. He's a good actor. Um, uh, it's the, an interesting way that they're doing the character of Batman with this is kind of like an emo sort of Batman out there. Robert Patterson, I don't know how old he is. I, I'm going to say late 20s, early 30s, maybe. Um, I think he's a little too old to be pulling the, the sort of... Um, uh, uh, sort of grunge type uh, uh batman i just don't uh, emo batman just doesn't work with the, the the age that robert patterson is there's so many contradictions so many contradictions in that movie anyways uh, as part of the deal reeves has begun a search to find a senior level level executive to run the new film uh deal for six in idaho blah 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 um uh, Pam and I are uh, gratefully inherited the relationship with Matt from the Batman, and although uh, the beginning stages of the planning of the Penguin series for HBO Max, uh, we were excited to nail down this overall deal because it's a cornerstone of what we want to do with the filmmakers that we are working with at the studio. Uh, we want to create an atmosphere where all of these filmmakers can excel and do their works and stay with uh, us once we, uh, they are inside the Warner's family. Uh, keeping Matt and creating a home for him uh, to do more projects in the Batman universe, but also originals, was very important to us. Uh, very interesting. Let me grab a drink. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, uh, uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, the Six in Idaho re-ups with Warner Brothers Television Group comes as production uh, starts looming for the Penguin, or the Penguin, uh, with Colin Farrell reprising his Oswald Cobblepot a uh, role for HBO Max. This is kind of weird. Uh, there's also a Batman Ar Arkham uh, series in discussion. Now, note, note they just... Uh, the previous uh, a rumor was that it was gone, and now it's just in discussion. I bet you... I bet you... One salmon uh, that, this, that this series did. Uh, Daniel uh, Pipsky continues to run the Six and I Do business. Oh, and long term, blah, 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 uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so this is this is a very interesting tell right here. Very interesting tell. So let's go back. Let, let's take a, take put the car in reverse for just a second here. Uh, oh, Tank, uh, Tank Ferret. God, good to see you here. Great to, I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't seen uh, old Tank Ferret in a while. We're talking a little bit about Batman here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what killed the dinosaurs in the Ice Age? Ah, la, la. Uh, let's turn Batman's brooding up 200%, make him wholly unlike. We'll have an interesting choice of villain. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, there we go. Tank Ferret. Good to see him here. Uh, like one of the uh, Le Matisse that uh, keeps playing when Batman does anything. Yes, indeed. Uh, literally, I got to the point where I knew the theme was going to play. It's like, take my breath away in Tomp Gun. Second, you know someone is about to uh, get some. You know the song is coming. And worst of all, the villain um, the villain pretty well wins. Yes, indeed. Yes. Ah, good to see you, Tank. Good to see you here. Um, yeah, I, I, let's see. His uh, Bear was kind of reading, reading up on some of that stuff. And it was basically, they were trying to, they had the whole situation with, um, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck uh, started uh, the film. It was going to be a detective sort of uh, idea of Batman. It never really got beyond that. I don't think he actually got to the script writing phase, or if he did, it was very, very limited. Uh, Matt Reeves comes in. Probably a couple other people kind of tumbled through there. Matt Reeves comes in, um, basically wants to make emo Batman in his, in his, um, uh, inspiration is, uh, what was, I'm trying to think of his, um, Kurt Cobain. 
Kurt Cobain out there. So, uh, yeah, as soon as Bear heard the, um, what was it called? Something in the Way? Was it Something in the Way from uh, Nirvana there? Uh, it might have been, it might have been another one. Um, anyways, I, very, very early on, I was like, oh no, not emo Batman. Why? Uh, and then it all, it, that, that only began in like the first five minutes, and then it was another four and a half lo hour long film, so. Ugh, oh, yo, 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 yo. All right, anyways, we will get back to what I was talking about here. Uh, um, uh, the Batman originals, but all, uh, Batman universe, but also originals out there. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what we're talking about here as far as, as far as what's called a first look film deal. Okay, so basically what is happening there is they are saying, okay, Matt Reeves, uh, you come up with something. Uh, Warner Brothers wants to be the very first to be able to uh, produce your film or make your film out there. Uh, so let's just say uh, uh, Matt Reeves comes up and he says, okay, I'm going to write the, uh, the new Batman or, you know, the Penguin out there or something like that does it all up and everything, hands it into Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers takes a look at it and says, ah, you know, this is good and all, but it's probably not the best. You know, we, we might take a pass on, on the penguin out there. Might not be in our best interest out there. Well, uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Reeves out there can then take can take all that sort of stuff and go shop that around. So let's say they go to, I don't know, Disney or Sony or something like that. He can take that and shop it around town. He doesn't, he's not necessarily under contract with Warner Brothers. He just has a, a, a first look, uh, uh, first pass type thing. Now, of course, they won't do that because um, the Penguin, uh, Batman, uh, that IP is owned by Warner Brothers. So they're not going to do that. But if he did kind of a, a, a sort of um, a differentiation on that, or maybe uh, he comes up with his own uh, let's just say he kind of comes up with uh, a, a new Star Wars out there or something like that. Uh, well, then, okay, uh, Warner Brothers passes on it. Well, now he can take it to whatever, Sony, Disney, you know, wh whatever other film film studios. Netflix, maybe, who knows? Uh, so that's what the first the first look deal means out there. So when they come up with this, and I'm trying to, who, who uh, DeLuca, DeLuca, one of the heads there. Uh, he's saying the Batman universe, but also originals, was very important to us. Now, Bear's doing a little bit of reading into that, but what if, okay, what if they are, for whatever crazy, crazy reason, they're going to go with uh, the Flash movie, uh, which has all the different Batmans in there. Uh, they're going to go ahead and put Ezra Miller in there. Uh, they might reshoot it or something like that, but let's just say uh, they go ahead and come out with the Flash movie. Okay, so they got the Joker movie out there. They said, uh, where was he up here? Um, ba, 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 ba. Uh, Todd Phillips with the Joker. Uh, they're, they're, you know, uh, name-checking old Todd Phillips there in the Joker franchise. Not a franchise, it's only got one movie, but and then the next movie's coming out here. Uh, so you've got two different universes with two different Batmans in there. Why would they have a third universe of a Batman? Well, they just, they just re-upped this deal, Bear, don't you know? Well, that's where, that's where this kind of comes in. Uh, what happens? What happens if they decide, you know, their, their production is starting for the Penguin. This is kind of interesting. They're going to put it on HBO Max. But the, uh, the sort of um, uh, 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 commandment coming down from the Z-Man is saying, hey, we've got all these properties with the DC stuff. Quit putting it on TV, like the CW or something like that. We need to put that, we need to, uh, the, these properties are valuable. Let's put the money into them and put them onto the big screen. And then, and then come to HBO Max. I think it's 45 days, somewhere right around there, something like that. Uh, so why they would, why they would have a, a big star like Colin Farrell uh, come in and do a, a classic uh, Batman villain out there. I mean, you, you have um, a precedent there with the Joker. The Joker could headline his own movie. Why can't the Batman, or excuse me, the Penguin out there? The Batman might not be able to hold his own out there. You never know. Uh, the Penguin out there, why put it on HBO Max? Why not put it actually in the theaters? Well, what happens if, let's just say, uh, maybe, maybe there isn't that much interest in the Penguin? Well, you might want to put it on HBO Max, so uh, when everybody's taking a look at it and says, eh, you know, it might not be good, it might be bad, or whatever, they don't have to release those numbers. They don't have to say, oh, well, so-and-so uh, many people watched The Penguin, uh, where you could go to the box office receipts and say, oh, well, it cost X amount of money, and they only made this amount of money. It's a complete flop. Uh, get rid of The Penguin. 
So, here's the theory here. What if, what if they come out with the Penguin on HBO Max, and it might be a bomb out there? Well, they can use that to say, ah, okay, well, the new Batman might not be that good, so let's go ahead and maybe write off that Batman movie. But bear, bear, you might say. What happened with the with the first look stuff? What, what, they told us that they're going to have a new Batman out there. Or are they? Originals are very important to us. So what if, what if they actually came up to him and says, you know, uh, we're not really too thrilled about this whole The Batman stuff. Uh, we put in $500 million or whatever it was the last time. Eh, it's not really that much of a profit that we made off of it and everything. Uh, with all the other stuff going on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pass on that sort of stuff. But, but you can get a first look with us. Whatever you come up with, uh, we're going to go ahead and, you know, pay for it, make that movie or whatever, whatever. What if this whole, this whole thing here was a payoff? Hmm? That might be, that might be the thing. The other thing that Bear thought was very interesting watching, um, watching, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, Tom? I, I think Tom over there at uh, Mid Midnight's Edge, uh, he had a very, um, uh, interesting theory with, uh, the whole, the Batman not looking like the Batman or the Riddler, uh, you know, he looked totally different than the Riddler that most people normally kind of assume the Riddler, you know, this sort of character. He, he was like a, a serial killer, uh, that just happened to leave, uh, like little riddles behind. Uh, the, the, the sort of riddle of the Riddler wasn't really a, a prominent part of his character. Uh, so, so the Midnight Edge folks over there uh, might have said, uh, hey, what if this is something similar to uh, what happened with J.J. Uh, Abrams out there? Um, what happens if uh, you, you take... Let me, t let me go back and talk about Star Trek for just a second. So they had Star Trek. J.J. Uh, Abrams come in. They need to reboot Star Trek. J.J. Abrams comes in and says, sure, sure, I'll do that. We'll do the new Scotty. We'll do the new Kirk. We'll do all the new stuff out there. But, but it's going to be 15% difference. And I says, oh, well, okay, you know, whatever, sure. The reason for the 15% difference, the reason that it's in the Kelvin timeline, uh, the reason you get the stinking uh, Star Trek Discovery show and all the other ones, because J.J. Uh, Abrams can go out and license that stuff without having to pay uh, the original, in this case, uh, well, Gene Roddenberry or whoever was holding the rights for the original sort of uh, Star Trek stuff. Uh, it's 15% difference, so all the all the new uh, uh, stuff that they put out there, this toys and video games and all that sort of stuff, that's going to J.J. Abrams. That's not going, uh, or at least most of it's going to J.J. Uh, uh, the rest of it might be going somewhere else. Same thing happened here. It's about 15%, 20% difference. So he might be getting a little bit of the revenue side of maybe some of the toys and some stuff like that. So they might have uh, uh, made an arrangement that way. Beer has no idea, has, has no way of knowing. Just kind of reading the tea leaves, reading between the lines there. It seems kind of, um, seems kind of interesting there. And you kind of go from that to, uh, kind of, this came out right before. A lot of this stuff came out, but uh, a screen rant out there. Uh, Neil Gay does the... <laughs> Gray, rather. I apologize, Neil. Neil Gray out there. Uh, Bear has no idea. Uh, the DC Does the DCEU really need a new Batman or any Batman? Very interesting. Very interesting thing there that uh, Bear kind of came across. All right, let me get back to the chat. I apologize here. Uh, let's see. I mean, uh, Batman Marco for anything says, I mean, um, Batman, the animated series exists and does all those other, um, uh, does all those things way better. I apologize, Mark. Oh, way better than some of those live actions do. Yeah. I, I still don't understand why the animation division separate from the live act, although egos, but, um, there's a whole other thing there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you'd figure that they would have like, um, Okay, let's take the best ideas from the animated series stuff and, and bring it to the live action. That, that would be a very easy production kind of run there. You could basically kind of say, oh, okay, yeah, this works. These shots work. Uh, this doesn't work. That shot doesn't work. Uh, bring it into a movie. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, shoot, a Batman a Mask of the Phantasm was very... I need to go check that out. I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that one. Uh, let's see. The Batman's editor understood a stretch but not squeeze. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I, uh, just horribly, horribly um, uh, out of focus and everything here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this stuff. Let me put that up. Let me find it here. Um, 
There we go. There's George Clooney. There he is right there in the bat nipples. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's <laughs> uh, Batman into uh, the bat verse. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, it'll make millions. Uh, West Batman, 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 Keaton Batman, Pun Batman, Batman Beyond, uh, Brody Batman, Gritty Dark Batman, Dark Knight Batman. Holy cow. Tootie Batman. Old Batman. I hate Superman Batman. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, Miguel. Good to see him here. Good to see him here. Are there any new CG news? Well, let's go ahead. Let's jump right into that since, since Miguel asked so nicely here. Let's go ahead and just jump right on into it here. Get right on into it here because we actually got some campaign updates here. Let me bring it up here one second here, people. Uh, from, um... I keep trying. I keep calling it the wrong thing. It's not. Uh, it's not the uh, cat's book. Never understood the really cat's book, but uh, there you go. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, uh, Glorious Rex. I keep forgetting about the name of it. He's got an important update. Uh, pencils are one hundred percent done. There we go. And there's the, there is the uh, stuff there on the side there. Uh, we are pleased to let all of our backers know that one hundred percent of the pencils are done. Uh, there's two pages left uh, to ink and a couple more pages to color. And then it's off to the letters and uh, finally pre-press. Still trying to figure out what pre-press is. No idea. Uh, we are fully expected to begin fulfillment of the campaign in October as planned. Very cool October. So uh, pretty coming up uh, pretty close here. As I type this, the supplemental book and Starlight Cat 2, I, I still don't understand that book. Uh, if somebody can explain that to Bear, it's like Super Cats or something. I, I, I don't know. Kind of weird. I don't think Bear is in the um, is in the demographics for that one. I don't, or, or very many things, I, I Bear should say. Uh, uh, volume 1 will head to the printer as well in September. And of course, backers, this is your final notice to update your shipping address. Uh, if you need to do so, we will be locking all orders within the next few days, uh, so we can begin to go through the orders uh, to check for missing information, etc. Probably here one second here, people. Uh, August 19th. So it might be closed by now. It might be closed by now. Um, if not, uh, just you probably probably uh, email or something like that if, if you have a um, update to your shipping address here. Uh, thank you for believing in us. Uh, we look forward to getting this book into your hands come October and sign up now uh, for access uh, to a special lenticular card with purchase uh, when you get uh, Inglorious Rex Volume 2. Well, I guess, uh, uh, spoiler alert, people, uh, Inglorious Rex lives. Yes, indeed. Uh, there you go. Uh, multiple uh, secret tier if you want to sign up for their pre-launch list out there. Very cool. A uh, very cool indeed. All right, let me get to the uh, to the next one here. One second here, people. Uh, this is what happens. Uh, one of these days, a professional show. Uh, not today though. Not today. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, where's the chat? There we go. There's the chat. Um. Oh, buena noche, buena noche. Yes, indeed. Ah, ha, ha. A little bit. Uh, Beer be, uh, has a hard enough time with English. Uh, just only a little bit of the Espanol out there. Just a, just a, uh, 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 what do you call that? Uh, un poquito, un poquito Espanol. I hope I got that right. Probably not. Uh, probably not. All right, moving on. Uh, where am I? Where's Beer here? No, not that one. I got that. We're talking about uh, a Brian Shear out here uh, with Gunship Thunder Punch. As soon as Beer can kind of bring it up here. Uh, hi, Thunder Punch crew. Uh, hi, Brian. I've been live streaming for about four hours a day. Uh, broken up into two hours. Oh, that, that's way too. That's too, way too little. Come on, Brian. You at least got to do a, a six to eight hour show um, uh, without without any restroom breaks either. I mean, that's that's a traditional a traditional CG live stream there. Uh, four hours is for pikers. Uh, over at YouTube while finishing up the book. Uh, he had knee surgery in July, so there were a few weeks uh, where it was hard to sit for long periods of uh, time at the desk. Uh, but we're going on all thrusters now. And he's got some, uh, let me bring that up here. He's got some beautiful, beautiful little artwork here. Let me bring that up. There we go. Uh, here is a few recent streams if you're interested in the progress, yada yada. I'm doing all the art chores myself except for the lettering, so this will give you an idea of what goes into a page. There you go, you get everything there, except for the lettering. 
he looks pretty good. Uh, moving forward, uh, in order to uh, avoid the next campaign being delayed, I'm not going to launch book three until it's finished. Wow. I, I've run into too many bumps along the road this year uh, from, some, from some health issues. Blech. We'll get this right. With some health issues with family to injury and surgery, just to name a few. Uh, so from now on, things only get launched when they are finished. Okay, gotta get back to work. Hope to see you on the YouTube chat. Well, uh, uh, hang tight with beer here for just a little bit. And then you can get over to Brian's channel. That's neat. So go check that. I'll have to link that in, uh, I, I forgot to uh, put his channel in the description there. So I'll have to do that later there for you good people. But uh, go check out, go check out Brian out there doing some great work. Great work. Yes, indeed. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, that is wise. Says Mark before anything. Yes, indeed. Uh, you know, um, uh, you kind of want to build off of the progress of your of your book. So you, you really want to try to have, you know, your campaign launching pretty close to after you've uh, delivered your book. So people kind of still have you sort of in mind. You know, oh, uh, I checked out this book. It was really good. Oh, let me let me put in my order for the next book here. So. Um, uh, other than that, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with Brian here. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say completely finished. Maybe, maybe like, I don't know, three quarters or something like that. You'll have plenty of artwork to show people. Uh, do the campaign, and by the time you know, sixty, ninety days or something like that is up, uh, you know, you'll you'll have um, you'll have hopefully the book done. Hopefully, y you never know. You never know. Uh, all right, and finally. Finally, people, let me bring it up here. If Bear can find it here. Oh, shoot, did I not? Did I not bring it in? I didn't bring it in. Well, let's take a look at some beautiful artwork here while Bear goes and finds what he needed to grab here. Uh, there we are. Let's do the thing. Oh, with the thing here, we'll just chat along amongst ourselves here. And try to forget that Bear is completely vamping here. All right, let me see. I can do that. It's already in use. Well, where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, for crying out loud. One of these days, people. <sighs> One of these days. We will do a promotional show. A Titan. Uh, go check out Gary Shipman's Titan, people. Uh, hits 3K, and another stretch goal is now unlocked. Yes, indeed. They're sending a uh, gift box uh, to children all around the world uh, through Samaritan's Purse there. So um, uh, go ahead and get your book. Uh, people... Go and get your book if you love the children out there. Gosh darn it. Gotta love the children. A uh, bear is vibrating. Uh-oh. Uh, isn't that what a bear usually does? Uh, yeah, you know. I, it was I... Hold on. Let me think about it. Is it vibrating? What the hell? Test, test, test. No, it's not vibrating. Oh, Mark is right here. I tell you what. Urgh. Anyways, anyways, uh, Titan, go check that out. Uh, Gary is doing some uh, uh, live streaming of what he's doing there, so uh, go check out. I think um, Bear put out a video, what was that, uh, Sunday? Saturday? No, Sunday. Sunday uh, put out a video uh, uh, doing a campaign review for uh, a Titan. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Miasma? Miasma? How do you pronounce it out there? Uh, pretty good campaign. Uh, do go check that out. Uh, He's actually got a, uh, all of them, I believe, all of them are hardcovers. Uh, great price, great price out there. Or, or if you happen to be overseas or something like that, he's got a digital version out there. So very cool. Uh, do make sure you go check that out. Uh, and get him at least a 5K, people. Gotta at least get Gary. To, I mean, uh, um, hardbound book. Uh, he's doing the, the artwork in some of the tiers out there. Um, just some great stuff. Uh, you will not be will not be disappointed by this at all. It is a bare promise out there. Yes, indeed. For the children, that's right. That is correct out there. All right, let me get back here. I get back. No, not to the Batman. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. One second here, people. One second. Although, uh, we should bring... I mean, if they're going to bring back... Listen, if they're going to bring back Michael Keaton, you might as well bring back... Might as well bring back George Clooney. What the hey? What the heck, people? Why not? I mean, why not? All right, let me find out where I'm at here. Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, I, I had the whole DCU. Does it really need a Batman or not? Uh, uh, go, well, it's in the it's in the description. You can go check that out if you if you like. And of course, let's go ahead and round this round this out. Let's go ahead and round this out because listen, people, we know why you come here. 
we know why you come here. It's not for the movie news. It's not even for the comic news, people. We know it's about the NFTs out there. Yes, indeed. Uh, from Deadline, uh, the gentleman producer Ivan Atkinson uh, adopts a decentralized NFT-based structure for future movie productions. Oh, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Uh, by uh, Melanie Goodfellow, oh, what a great name, and Jesse Whitlock. Uh, producer and writer Ivan Atkinson, uh, whose credits include Guy Ritchie's uh, The Gentleman and Aladdin, has said he will adopt a uh, DAO structure underpinned by NFTs for future uh, feature productions. Under the movie, his London-based uh, company, One Van Films, a down by the river, uh, is partnering with uh, Light Cycle, a 3D metaverse platform uh, tailored to fashion, entertainment, gaming, filming, music, sports, and NFT on the, uh, how do you pronounce that? Cadaceous? Cadaceous ecosystem. If that makes sense to you, it makes more sense to you than it does beer. A DAO gives uh, control of a decision-making for movie productions and releases to community members with full transparency and without ins influential by one central authority. What could go wrong? One Vin Films and Light Cycle want to pioneer an NFT and DAO project that will reward loyal fans and supporters with an up-close and personal relationship uh, to the film industry and unprecedented behind-the-scenes access. Uh, basically, it's a lot of cocaine and depression. There, I saved you an NFT. Uh, this project is one that has success uh, taken careful crafting and consideration. Let me read that again. Uh, this project is one that has taken careful crafting and consideration. Yeah, I liked it the first way. I said Atkinson. I am. Uh, I aim to produce. I aim to contribute rather uh, to the film industry by creating a way for audience members to participate in the movie making process. Uh, this this is gonna just go down in flames. Uh, the project will revolve around digital NFT ownership, quote unquote, and tokenization of exclusive moments and collectibles. Fans will be able to interact with the movie to choose different endings, for example, or to purchase the items they like in the film. What could go wrong? And the conversations with Ivan naturally evolved from straightforward NFT project with incredible utilities uh, through to a full-blown tokenization project, uh, said some lady at Light Cycle. It makes complete sense. It completely makes sense uh, that NFT holders will be able to stake their NFTs against all future one Van Film Productions, the disruption to the traditional film market is unprecedented. It's the start, or end, of future of filmmaking. I would say probably more the end than the, uh, than the beginning there. I, uh, we, we're, we're combining suckers from, from the NFT world with suckers from the Hollywood world and just combining them together to just create a, a, a giant a, a sucker universe there. Around NFTs, what? What could possibly, what could possibly go wrong? I'm sure, I'm sure you'd put money with these two people. Of course. Well, uh, uh, definitely with Guy Ritchie, but uh, the other guy, uh, not so much. Why would you have hair on your chin, but not your head? What's up with that? What is up with that? Anyways, anyways, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it here with your chats. Yes, indeed. All right, where am I? Crying out loud. One of these days. One of these days, people. One of these days. For the children, that's right. Uh, still holding off on IGD stuff, says uh, Marco for Anthony. Uh, still too much money on a couple of campaigns that aren't done. <coughs> uh, Gary is one of the... I, I would say your money is fine with Gary. Gary, um, uh, it will not lead to disappointment, I promise you. To burn all your salmon to a crisp. Uh, yes, that's exactly why we're here. Uh, probably to make fun of beer. I come here to watch beer melt down about NFTs. Thank you, Jeff. Do appreciate that. <laughs> and VM says we come here for your charisma. Yes, indeed. Always, always. Thank you, VM. Uh, you got to understand uh, one thing about beer. Or one thing, beer. Uh, software and IT infrastructure talk is filled to the gills with nonsensical buzzwords. Yes, and if you go and talk to any of those people about NFTs... They'll probably say the same thing they're saying. I, I think most things NFT related are going to go down in flames. They already have. Uh, just like the metaverse. <laughs> just like the metaverse. Uh oh, Beer said the phrase. Uh, I said something there. Oh, goodness. 
So I'll go into I'll go into hell now. Hill in a handbasket, I tell you people. Hill in a handbasket. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, I, I think that pretty much wraps wraps up what Beer was talking about here. Once again, I, I completely, you know, uh, you wake up and you say, ah, you know, I had a really good video. I'm proud of myself. A lot of people watched it. And then you go and find out that everything was wrong about the video that you made. And a little bit of uh, uh, eating of crow out there, but uh, at the same time, it might not. Might not. Uh, that's why you always try and take... You know, instead of the hot take out there, you try to take a little bit of time and say, Hey, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it kind of shakes out with this sort of crazy flash situation out there and everything else. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's what happens when you say the phrase. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, uh, great to see. Great to see everybody out there. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the uh, sort of crazy flash situation there. Uh, figuring out what the heck is going on with the uh, Matt Reeves situation over there at Warner Brothers. Are they going to come back with the Batman um, and totally prove Bear wrong? Or is Bear going to be proven right? And they're going to kind of scuttle it? You know, you never know. You never know. Until a couple more days. We'll, we'll find out. Um, uh, you know, uh, one of the things, uh, Bear's not certain whether or not he's going to be doing uh, uh, two shows a week anymore. Uh, kind of like where we're doing it one show a week, so uh, I don't know. We might talk a little bit about it on, on Saturday, but uh, if Bear's not around. You know what? It could be could be the whole tropical storm that's uh, going to get Bear. You never know. You never know, people. Anyways, uh, great to see Marco for Anthony here. Uh, even Jeff Potts on occasion. <laughs> A VM, and of course Tank Ferret. Uh, great to see a bunch of great people out there. Uh, and if you happen to be one of the new uh, uh, folks out there, new subscribers out there, welcome to the channel. We do appreciate you. All right, well, you know what, people? You know what, all this talk, all of this talk about uh, The Flash and the Batman and this and that, uh, and being slightly disappointed, has made, has made Bear hungry. So he's going to head back into the woods. So until next time, people, Grrrr.